What you will be experiencing here today is a short preview of our educational documentary on New Mexico and how the artistic process and creative solutions can save the native flora, the water, the environment, and the unique culture of New Mexico. The art and the individuals we will visit demonstrate how we are all connected and how creative thinking, which we call the artist's process, can help to preserve the fascinating cultural diversity that has developed over the centuries in New Mexico. We visited Irvin and Lisa Trujillo in Chimayo to see Irv collecting and dyeing with native plants and Lisa spinning wool from the churro sheep that Irv's sister raises on the family farm, which has been in the family for generations. Irvin and Lisa have won numerous awards for their spectacular weavings and their revival and preservation of the weaving tradition of Hispanic weaving in New Mexico. Their shop, Centinella Traditional Arts, also helps to support other Hispanic weavers who uphold this tradition. We really want to show in our program how the individual can, in their own sphere of influence, support the native. We visited Joan West in the fall as the plants were going dormant to see how she has created a magnificent series of gardens on their land that emphasize and help preserve the plants native to New Mexico. We are looking forward to visiting her for an in-depth interview in the spring to see the gardens in full bloom. One of my passions as an artist is native flora and how it connects with preserving culture. Plants of the Southwest on Agua Fria in Santa Fe is working hard to educate people about native plants at the nursery. We attended a fascinating lecture on hummingbirds, which migrate through New Mexico in the summer. We are an important stopping off place for them to fatten up for their amazingly long migration south for the winter. The native plants of New Mexico are very important in sustaining them on the journey. Our ponderosa pine forests are one important tree for their survival, and we went up to Hyde State Park to watch volunteers affiliated with Audubon count and band hummingbirds flying in from the surrounding ponderosa pines to feed. Ancient trees are another one of my passions, and we visited the History Grove in Via Caldera Preserve in the Jemez Mountains with Rourke McDermott, the landscape architect of the preserve. The History Grove is a stand of magnificent old-growth ponderosa pines. Rourke is doing all kinds of innovative programs at the preserve, and we discovered that landscape architecture is far more diverse and linked to the artist's process than we ever realized. Rourke was also one of the many multi-talented individuals that we encountered in our research on putting together this show. He learned the art of harvesting micaceous clay and pit firing from the Native Americans that he lived with previously, as well as tapestry weaving. He also does all of the photographic work for the preserve and their website. Through your funding, you enable us to go back and do further interviews with Rourke and see how he lives his passion and that passion affects others. Mentoring is just so important to spreading the word about living the creative life and the artist process. University of New Mexico has developed an innovative curriculum called Art and Ecology. We met up with the students and teachers on a food shed trip around New Mexico, interacting with the people and places who produce local food and helping in the production of it. One of the teachers, Jeanette Hart Mann, lives on an organic farm in Anton Chico with her family. Their emphasis is on permaculture, and they call their project the Fodder Project. This was the first stop for the students. Besides Jeanette, we will also be interviewing Katherine Harris, one of the other teachers in the art and ecology program, who comes from both art and, again, an innovative slant on landscape architecture. Buying local food is vital to preserving the small farm culture of New Mexico. It also conserves our local plants, like our world-famous chili pepper varieties. As an artist, it is both life-sustaining and visually beautiful for me to see where the food I eat comes from, how it is raised, and how it sustains the local culture and beauty of the land in New Mexico.
We will be taking you to the Santa Fe Community College's Trades and Advanced Technology Center to see what they are doing to develop innovative and sustainable alternative energy systems, as well as teaching the students who will work in these fields. Their program is so exciting as they develop work with energy sources like algae for biofuel that are not even being used in the marketplace yet. Rulin Tangen is an internationally respected choreographer who founded the intertribal dance troupe Dancing Earth. We will interview her and some of the dancers and show their riveting performance. They have received the 2010 Smithsonian National Museum of the American Indian Expressive Arts Award for their impressive work. Through your support, another artist we will visit whose work speaks of food in our culture is Colette Hosmer. She examines man's separateness from nature in our relationship to food and how our food is removed from the source. Her work speaks of rituals of sustenance with heavy layers of symbolism. Colette has done five residencies in China working with the local craftsmen to produce her large-scale sculptures in public spaces across the country. Although New Mexico presents itself as an arid place, water has played a huge part in shaping the land and the culture. Because of water and rain and snow patterns, our state is incredibly diverse, and many microclimates can present themselves within a small radius. In the Galisteo Basin Preserve, Jan Willem Janssens from Earthworks Institute is working on restoring land overgrazed by cattle. He demonstrated to us how they are restoring an arroyo so that it will hold the water on the land instead of sweeping it away along with the sediment. What we need to do... On such a hot, dry day, we were amazed to see him dig a short distance down into the arroyo and find water there because of their restoration project. Trading posts are a fascinating part of the history of the West. Mark Winters bought and restored the Todlina trading post in 1997 in order to preserve and foster the Navajo weaving tradition of the two gray hills. These weavings are spun very finely in only the natural colors of the churro sheep that the Navajo raise. Mark's work with the Navajo and the Todlina trading post enable the residents of the two gray hills to make a living from their weaving and foster the continuance of their tradition. You weren't getting that? <laughs> it was good. <laughs> Our documentaries have helped to foster our mission of how the artist's process and creative solutions go hand in hand with preserving the environment and local culture. They have been used as a teaching tool in conjunction with installations of my work at museums and art centers. Groups such as native plant societies have also used them as a teaching tool. They have aired on PBS stations and nationally on FEC TV. We have started a website that will provide a public forum on creativity and environmental solutions, as well as a clearinghouse for information on the people we have interviewed and the places we have visited. Your funding will enable us to produce this documentary, foster the artistic process, and the continuance of the unique culture and landscape in this amazing state we call New Mexico.